How's it going guys, Vincent here, and in this video we're going to be covering the checklist of things that you need to take off before you pull the motor in a Subaru. This is a 2006 Subaru Forester with a single overhead cam EJ25 motor. And this thing, I've spent quite a long time just very carefully taking apart, but just to run through all the things that you're going to need to do to take this off, obviously like the first thing you do is take out the airbox, then You've got the radiator that sits in here. Getting the battery out, getting the battery tray out. The battery is right there. Disconnecting the fuel lines. This is a manual transmission, so that is the clutch slave cylinder right there. Get all the bell housing bolts off. That's gonna require getting rid of the starter motor. Also your alternator that sits right here, as well as your power steering pump. Got the power steering pump pulled aside right now. The headers and these are the oxygen sensor connectors that you gotta get out of the way. There's like nine Bolts total one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And you've got your two O2 sensors on here. What I did in my case was I just used a little pick like this to kind of pull up on these little tabs here. You do have this really nice master engine wiring harness. These are the power steering lines um, that you gotta pull out of the way. One of the other challenging things for me during this whole process was getting the heater hoses pulled off. I don't know why, but these things were just super on there. This is one of the uh, air intakes. You did have like the two serpentine belts. One of these was for the power steering pump right here. The other one was for the alternate as well as the AC compressor. You can drain the oil if you want. Next steps here are gonna be just taking off the last two 14 mil nuts that secure this engine into the two engine mounts. And once we got those out, the final thing we're gonna be doing is taking out this last bell housing bolt. This thing's gonna separate. We're gonna hook on a chain around this AC compressor bracket, this AC is gonna get out of the way. And the other engine mount point on this car is this hook. And it might be a good idea to just take off this aluminum bracket so you don't risk bending that. Do make note that you've got a lot of these little engine grounding straps. So while you're lifting this thing out, just check all of your connections again to make sure you've got everything out of the way. And then you're gonna be putting strain on the engine output shaft. And so you just want to be really careful to kind of try to get this thing to come out like this and then lift it up so that you're not putting a lot of stress onto the shafts you got coming out of the engine. So once we do all this stuff, we should be good to go. I hope this video is a nice checklist for people who are about to pull a motor on their Subi and good luck. So basically what I'm going to do, put that right there, hook the chain around that. Damn, where did that bolt go? Yes. So now we've got that guy on like so. And now we put this guy on like here.
This is pretty cool. We can see the engine separation right there between the transmission and the actual engine block. So after much trial and error, I just kept pushing it. I hope I didn't damage anything, but we've officially got the engine block separated from the transmission bell housing right here. We got this. This took so long. Oh my gosh. This is so freaking cool. Alrighty guys, and this is what the engine out of the car looks like, and my goodness this took a while, but it is done and I'm super happy with it. After much struggling, got the, all the bolts, or got four bolts in, which is hopefully sufficient, and by four bolts I really mean two bolts because I only got these two top bolts, and then I used the little studs that come out of the engine um, for the bottom two. There is a little bit of coolant dripping out as you can see. Replacing the timing belt is going to be real easy. We are changing the head gaskets on this so we're going to be taking off the heads on either side of this thing. And this is what the engine bay looks like. And we can also see the release bearing right there which uh, I'm not wearing my glasses so I can't tell. And then I am trying to support the AC compressor as best I can just so I'm not putting too much stress on these hoses. But yeah, really, really happy with this. This is honestly the first engine I've ever pulled, but I was lucky enough my dad had these uh, things kicking around, so finally using them. And the little engine stand. Hope this video helps everyone out there who's doing this. Um, and definitely a lot of work, but this is super cool. We can see all the oil that's been dripping off the engine because of the bad head gaskets. So I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to put on use some new head gaskets and then I'm going to be really excited to see how this thing does. Thank you all for watching. Take care and talk to you next time.